Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kanye G Show. Sorry for the long intro there. I was talking to Thick James. He had popped into the studio to ask me if Denny's Restaurant also emails me. Um, I do get communication from time to time, not from Denny's necessarily, but from... What do we got going on here? I got an echo. It's probably this. Let me turn this down. Hello. 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 Yeah, I can't tell. No, that's echoey right there. That's echoey. That's not. Must have been uh, something on the computer. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Thick James is here. Thick James? What's up? Um, no, I don't get a lot of emails from Denny's. Um, I've actually never been emailed by Denny or any of his associates. Now, Pizza Hut will text me. They, they, oh, oh, don't. Well, what happened? What did you do, sign up for Denny's Lunch Club? <laughs> Apparently, I, I hate that motherfucker. Who? <laughs> the restaurant? Yeah. Why? I don't know why they, I, I was so hateful for him. And they send me emails about. What do the emails they, say? It's bacon fast, I guess. Is it <laughs> It's Bacon Fest down there at Denny's? I guess so. It's, oh, it's, my. Yeah, and, well, that's an important email, number and one. Pizza Hut. You want, I'm on the Pizza Hut Club. And then they give you, you, you're part of the Pizza Hut Club? Yeah. Okay. So. Did you, but, <laughs> is that a membership fee? No. No, it's free? But, they send me things, that, that, like specials and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I understand anybody can get those. But I'm the idiot that... What are you oh, getting from Pizza Hut Club? Hold on. It's good. It's good. It's funny. I get it. I I got uh, rewards. Yeah. For, for, for free two, for free two topping pizza. You know, you know. But but there's a catch. Is it a delivery fee? Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't. Could you just pick it up? Yeah, but the delivery fee. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, but. And then and then, and then no, there's not delivery fee if you pick it up. I know, but anyway. <laughs> It's, it goes. When's the last time you picked up your own pizza? I did it one time in the ashtray, but <laughs> how long did you live in the ashtray? Two years. Uh, anyway, so I got I. How many I, times I, did you get food delivered to the ashtray? Two or three times a week. What food would you be getting delivered? Pizza. Ever? How many times did you eat pizza at the ashtray? I mean, a week. Take me through a week of the ashtray. Tell all your money's good, and you're a week in the ashtray. What are you doing for for lunch and dinner and breakfast? Walk me through it. I'm an old person by groceries. Okay, I'm just saying. Monday morning, James has money. He lives in the ashtray. What's happening? Well, I eat a bowl of cereal. Yeah, saves a little bit of money. What flavor? What brand? Toastios. Okay. Classic. Then, and then I would probably go spend at least ten or ten or fifteen dollars on lunch, and then call it good. Where would you go to lunch? It's called this Lalo's Mexican restaurant down the street. Okay. Would you dine in or carry out? Oh, I'd dine in. All right. And what would you order? A bigger table because none of them fit me. The small tables down there. Yeah. Smaller people usually. Yeah. Yeah. You're big though. I mean, you're just a big guy. You got those big shoulders, and you're carrying around all that mass, the power. I mean, that's a lot of responsibility. Number one, to walk in around a bunch of small brown people. You're walking around there. They're thinking, "What is this? You know, what is this American? Look at this giant American that just walked in here alone, asking for a large table." They set you down and give you some chips and dip. And what are they? What did you order? Enchiladas. Um. Shrimp? Yeah, the, the, the same as same as here. I ordered a meat, uh, these, uh, the, din- the dinner with two beef burritos. Yeah. Even cheese burritos. Yeah. That are like our combo, bur- like our monster burritos. Uh huh. Imagine two of those in one plate <laughs> and rice and beans. Oh my gosh. $15? And plus some machada. Oh, what's that? The uh, Mexican rice milk drink thing. God. How many calories do you think that meal was? I mean, then I go home taking a nap. <laughs> that's just storing energy. That's what I'm saying. You're just storing energy up. 
how are you? So you'd wake up. That's Monday. It's lunch. You went down to Lola's, got yourself a damn double burrito dinner, carved up, walked home or drove drove drove. drove home. Yeah, I don't want to be ridiculous. Drove home, took a nap, sleep it off a little bit, and then wake up, smoke a couple cigarettes. Call Joe. Call Joe. But then now what are we dinner's coming around a corner, buddy, and you I just called, slept I, off all that energy. I called Joe and then we go eat Red Lobster or what are you getting at Red Lobster? Not cocktail shrimp. I no. No cocktail shrimp anymore. They don't do it no more? No. What's going on with Red Lobster and their cocktail shrimps? I don't know. That It's just like the Crescent Rolls and Billsbury. Yeah. But I didn't realize that there was a scrimp uh, shortage down there at Lobster. Yeah, yeah so... So uh, what do you get at a scrimp fest if you're ordering scrimp and you get sautéed, like they always have them skewers. Yes, grilled and all that stuff. And then they get the shrimp. buttered ones, but they don't got the cocktails no more, little wing. Wow. Must have got least somebody the big, sick. Hold on. Hold on, folks. At least the big ones. Yep. We got bing bong. Probably. No, we'll pause. This is fun, Conrad. Hmm? I actually feel relaxed today. Good. Well, we're going to pause here. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, had a customer. Then Thick James told him that somebody had left a pit bull here in, um, in its kennel in the hot sun. Uh, clear that's Milo. Um, so we'll probably have the law enforcement come over here and ask us some questions about it. Um, we'll play stupid and hopefully they'll haul it off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you trying to get rid of it or something? I don't know. It, it's gonna go to Caleb anyways. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, it might go to it might go to the Caleb in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> sky Caleb. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's microchipped in case it gets lost. Um, but accidents happen, you know, sometimes. It's a mentally challenged person might run over with the bike, an accident. I'm just. I don't want anything to happen to him. I'm. <laughs> I know. More calling for, um, I don't know how how in love you are with the dog life right now. What would you rate your dog um, husbandship at a 1 uh, to 10? A 10. I, I take care of my dog. But I'm not saying you don't take care of it. I'm saying like. How much do I love him? Are you ready to get divorced from your dog? Um, it's okay. You still love him. I know. I still love him, but, but it's for the better. You think it's time to move on? Um, Have you broken up with it really? I'd get, I'd get lonely, though, if it would, would from Milo. I don't know if that's true. I don't know, because I feel like you would talk. To, to call people and talk to people? Yeah, I think you would just talk to the same as you do now. I think you would do the same thing you do. You would just go to your um, shed and or your room, wherever you're staying, your apartment, and you'd probably just talk. To myself, yourself, whoever. Um, when the dog's there, it makes it seem like you're talking to the dog, but I know you're not. <laughs> you're, the things you're. <laughs> I understand. You're not talking to your dog. Really? You're just looking at him, talking to yourself. But he's smart. I told you yesterday. I think we should get him into dog fighting. <laughs> and that important? I guarantee you, there's an underground dog fighting ring in this town. Let me just Google it. You can't Google it. You can get on that uh, QAnon websites, the ones that all the Trump supporters got on to ride at the Capitol with mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did friends. you go into jail for that? Who? Mom. No. Are they taking all the rioters to jail and stuff? No. Oh, good. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we totally back the blue on that or whatever. Yeah. yeah what? <laughs> we got Jenkins. Yeah, whatever it was to say. No, I don't think that... Illegal dog fighting is clearly wrong, and everyone knows that. But friendly banner is okay. But I think that having a dog that doesn't have a purpose, that clearly is bred for dog fighting and not letting that dog spread its dog fighting wings, I think that that's a mistake as a human. Um, to recognize that an animal, uh, maybe you 
you know, a pit bull animal that, and yours in particular with its big shoulders, just like yours and its big chest and its strong jaw would be a great dog fighter. And for us to look around and be like, oh, well, we probably shouldn't do that. What if you had a purebred horse that was out there beating sea biscuit times and you're like, yeah, but we don't want to take it to the track. We think it's cruel. It's like that animal was built to run. Your animal was built to fight. Um, and it's a great way to meet friends. Dog fighting is. You're going to meet a lifelong buddies. Can I make my own dog fighting club? You could make your, you could make your own team for sure because you'd have to get trainee dogs for Milo to eat up on. You can, know. I, can I start with raccoons? <laughs> you want to kill Damien's raccoons? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so anyways. Yes, dog biting. We shouldn't have told the customer that, but that's okay. He was complaining about the heat. It is hot here in Oklahoma uh, on this 30th of June, uh, 2023. Uh, they say it's record-breaking heat. Greta Thornburg from um, that little paddle boat. You know the girl I'm talking about, that paddle boat girl that she was drifting around chasing cruise ships, talking about climate change and stuff for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Well, anyways, they picked her up off that dinghy, and they're dragging around the country, and she's got a point, man. It's getting hot out there. Um they need to get, there's a movie, it's not a documentary per se, it's called Geostorm, it, it stars Gerard Butler, um, which you know from the movie 300, which has all the half-naked men beating the crap out of each other, do you remember 300? I don't know, uh, Conrad, yeah. I don't watch very much movies, so I don't know about all these. Well, I'm trying to use references you may remember, but anyways... Gerard Butler is an actor, got a beard, kind of looks like the gladiator guy. Oh, the gladiator guy. Okay. Sure. Okay, I know that guy. Fine. Just imagine that that's, it doesn't matter. It's Tom Hanks. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you can't picture it, just yeah. picture any of these guys. So Tom Hanks is in it, and uh, he's playing Gerard Butler. Okay. There? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, it's about um, Geostorm, which is the whole planet was getting extreme weather. Because it had depleted its ozone and, uh, you know, like, you know, the tides and everything, everything shifted. And though you get this extreme weather, the ice caps melt, everything's come, you get this flooding. And so what this character did, uh, this Tom Hanks fella, who's playing by Gerard Butler, he built this satellite, this network of all these satellites that's able to block the rays from the sun and all this stuff and control the weather via satellite Whoa. so con- this huge cool. net over the entire globe and then all the countries the big power countries were all involved so you got your japan and china and i'm sure mexico was there for burritos and stuff like iran. that and iran probably showed up to bring you know dong, dong, dong. yeah they had to bring the incense and stuff um so everybody chipped in in this movie the whole world did and they built this net of uh freaking basically just satellites that block what they want to block and then control. They can adjust different things to allow certain elements through the ozone, sunlight and all that stuff, and they can adjust all this, and that way the world turns, man, and there's no weather. Well, in the movie, it got hacked by the president and they were going to freaking, you know, take over the world or something. But it's possible that we might need it. We might need it or we might get a geostorm is what I'm saying. Because it's probably 100 and... This is 143 here today. Yes. And the, that's, just, that's just the temperature. That's not, that's not with index. That's not heat index. No. It's 143 degrees here. So, like, it doesn't matter if you're voting for Ron DeSantis or Joe Biden or Donald Trump. Guys, that's 143 degrees, buddy. Like, we got to get a geostorm going on. You know what I mean? we got to build the satellites, get Tom Hanks on the phone... Let's get something going on to protect us. Yeah, Mike. My... Because nobody's really aware of what the hell is going on. We're just like, it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, it's hotter than shit out, guys. It costs a million dollars to cool this place, any place. Even my crappy bungalow in Prague, it takes $5 million to cool that piece of shit. Lawrence is good. And Well, yeah, Lawrence is living in the donation box. He's all right. <laughs> I mean, he's got a good, nice heater in there. It cools, you know, whatever. He's all right. He's got a window unit. Yeah. It's just, it's frustrating. Here's how I know it won't get solved. I think 
Is somebody here? Is that you? I think I hear you squeaking. No, it's okay. I'm just... Yeah, it's me. I try to listen for the door. Oh. Two. We're, we run this podcast out of a taco shop, guys, so um, luckily we're never busy, and we can do podcasts in between service, um, like most taco shops do, as you guys know. They all have podcasts. You guys probably listen to Carlos O'Kelly's right now. Or you, Taco Mayo. <laughs> turn off Taco Mayo's stupid podcast and turn ours on, guys. God. <laughs> um, anyways, Go what was I talk. saying? Oh, uh, water. Oh, smart people. Water. You know what I mean? I know we're never going to solve this weather problem because I I think my wife, although sometimes socially not so smart, meaning interacting with, she's got a different way of interacting with people, probably better than James and I. Um, she's very book smart. She seems very studious. She reads a lot, very smart. Yes, she's very smart. Yeah, well, here's something that she said the other day that makes me think we can't solve this global warming, buddy. Um, she said, isn't it? funny that all night while I'm sleeping I can my body can hold in farts but when I wake up in the morning I have held my farts in all night and I have to fart all morning and I looked at her I was like you think that when you're asleep you're not farting because the moment you fall asleep which happens the moment she lays down in the bed like she'll come in there what are we watching I don't want to watch this lay down and go to sleep make me change the channel 50 times you know what I mean um, can we turn the office on? Then, like, three seconds later, falls asleep. like, I don't know why we had this conversation about what to watch. You're just going to fall asleep and fart on me for the next hour and a half as I watch this documentary about geostorms with Tom Hanks. She had no idea that when she fell asleep, she passed gas. Flashlands. There was a flashlands attack that's been going on, and it was kind of a revelation for her to know that not only is she expelling all this. Is she gagged in the night? <laughs> Only if you make her. <laughs> you don't do that to people, man. <laughs> you mean like snore? No, like from her own flesh once. No, it's not. It's usually not that toxic, I don't think. it's. It seems to be trapped. She does um, comforter and sheet. You know what I mean? There's people that have a sheet. You know how you got two sheets? You ever been? They got the... Fitted sheet and then like uh, the motel. She, yeah, she lives her life like a motel, where they, then they put the second sheet on and then a comforter. You know what I'm saying? It's I, disgusting. I don't, I don't, you, but it traps farts in there, so she just. So so the way I'm living in the shed with my bed situation. Yeah. Is not. I the, can't imagine you're not. Is not the correct way. You probably don't have a top sheet, do you? I I. Oh, it's on there. I just make it. I just do it around in my body and then go to bed. You don't even fit your sheet on, do you? No, I just, no you just, I just lay on a pile of sheet. Yes. <laughs> it can just be sheet material. does yeah. not need to be fitted for the right thread count. No. Nope. I think it's smart to live humble like you do. Um, <laughs> do you want to tell you what happened to a couple of days? I think it's smart to live humble like you do in a shed on a pile of ill-fitting sheets. With the <laughs> under um, cared for <laughs> canine pit bull, and um, that just wants to be a fighter, and a carton of cigarettes and a, and a coffee maker in the news. That's a, that's a pretty good little. That's humble, baby. That's humble. Yeah. Okay, go on. Sorry. No. What were you gonna say? No. But just... when you were dating Rebecca, did she fart on you a lot? I mean, you weren't dating long enough, probably. How long were you dating? Seven years? We weren't dating. We were just friends. Okay, when you guys were just friends, and you were friendly with her, and she did she ever have sleepovers as a friend? No. No? Did she ever fall asleep? She looks like she probably fell asleep a few times. I don't know. Well, she did, no, she didn't fall asleep with me. She never fell asleep in the room or anything and fart? Uh, she didn't go to the bathroom. She holds in. Well, that's a problem. Yeah, she wasn't being honest with you then. You know, that's the thing. You get to the point where... But on, on the bed sheets and stuff, one night I had a dip of chewing tobacco and had a sneeze. And just imagine how, how it went down in the bed. So, I said, I How know. are you laying? 
Just on my back. You were laying. <laughs> you had a big dip of chewing tobacco in, and you were laying on your back, and you sneezed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just imagine. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, that, that, you go up your nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every night, but it's still I'm still getting it off. You gotta be thankful for the things you go through, though. You know, I mean, you have a a different rock that you're carrying than most people. You know what I mean? What's that? Well, I, everybody's got their their little bag of rocks that they carry around of stuff they got to do that day. It can be a bag of rocks, a bag of bricks, whatever you want to. Uh, or or Dam- balloons. Or Damien's. Yeah, Damien's a bag of hot air balloons. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He can float over here. Tell us what he's got going on. Um, your bag of rocks is <laughs> different than most people's. You're usually worried about uh, what you're going to eat for breakfast, right? Yeah. What you're going to eat for lunch. <laughs> and um, dinner, too. And then in between those worries, then you're kind of worried about, like, I wonder if I got that. Remember when last night when I choke sneezed? You're laying in bed on your back, choke sneezed a bunch of dip all over the bed, and you're wondering if you got it all. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you wake up choking? Every night, man. <laughs> it's nothing worse since I started chewing again. Oh. I used to be smoke a cigarette in bed and go to... You can't sleep. fall asleep smoking, dummy. No, 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 no. I don't do you that. know that people die doing that? No, no. Tom Arnold lost a sister no, I don't from do Roseanne. That. No, since I started chewing again... Um, it's even worse. The smoking is? No, uh, that's that's good in, in the night time. I just put a dip in and go to bed, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't take it out or anything. I just lay, lay there until it builds up, and that's it. Oh, yeah. And then you just eventually fall asleep? Yeah. And what happens? Big old <laughs> puddle of crap all over your bed. Put <laughs> <laughs> all over the bed. Got spitters. Oh, man. I got spitters. Guys, you guys can buy our new coffee table book called I Got Spitters. Um, it's by James. It's just a, it's an art book where he's, it's like a photograph book. He's taken photographs of all those different spitters. Um, he's named some of them. Some of them have locations on them. You guys are welcome to buy this book. It's twenty four ninety nine, And we really want to thank I Got Spitters and our publisher, Random House, for publishing this coffee table book. And don't book. forget about my other book, Conrad. Um, I give up. <laughs> Just give up by James. Uh, so yeah, we got a big weekend coming up. Everybody knows uh, we got to go to Kansas as always, but this time yeah. not just for work for for fun. James is probably not working at all. He needs the vacation, but we're gonna do the mowing obligations. Then go up north as always to Kansas City, Kansas, Wyandotte County for all you county people who like to know what counties they are. And um, that's where we'll be, dude. I'm sure we're going to be swimming and eating crap and doing the 4th of July thing that people do, getting drunk and yeah. shooting fireworks off. And as far as I know, I'm going to pick Caleb up. I don't know if we're going tonight, probably tomorrow morning. I'm taking the brown truck and the dogs. I think I'm going to buy a... Six pack of what is that called? Schmearing off ice. <laughs> what? <laughs> <The hell? laughs> yeah, man. Just so I can tell Jonah to go get me a smeared off. Yeah. That's a. Yeah. You got to do things as father. Yeah. You know what I mean. And uncle too, man. Yeah. You oh yeah. The, uh, you know what? The kids really like me now. What kids? Yours. Um, I think they've always liked you. You didn't like kids. So then maybe I accepted that how they are and that's the way it is? I don't know if that's... I mean, I guess that's what you've done. It's gotten better. It's been exactly the same. You, you might just be normalizing yourself to be around children again. You kind of ogred out for a few years, you know? I, I know. I lived in the ghetto. Uh, yeah, you ghettoed up in the ashtray, and you were living in a, in a damn squalor with car theft going on and everything else and not visiting family and not being around kids. I mean, you hated kids. There was a book you wrote about how you hate kids. Um, 
You know, that's tough to get over. And, and noises. You hate noises. You hate freaking um, sports. You know, <laughs> you hate hey, well, you hate sitcoms. You hate I, I don't, talk shows. I don't know what I like. I like cigarettes and coffee. You gotta figure out what you like, buddy. I mean, you like booty. Uh, yeah. I don't know what. Hunter and I over the past four months have been talking about buying a sign, a particular sign to put out in the backyard. I have we haven't got it yet, but we'll oh, wait. we're looking for donations. James would like to put up a live nudes sign, um, neon plug in, hundred and ten volt. If you don't <coughs> mind, everyone, we'd like to get that up at the shed, White very, House, the White House, very soon. Um, speaking of white, I did want to bring this up just for a moment. Um, we don't talk about it much, but we are both uncles. Not, not only is James an uncle, I'm an uncle also. And up until now, we've only had nieces. Um, at least I have. I was the only one that had the, the boy. So everybody else had, had a nephew. I never had one. So we just had nieces. And as everyone knows, you know. They're nieces. They're nieces. You don't need them. Sorry, Collins. I mean, what are you guys actually doing? Are you bringing joy to our life at all? I mean, are you doing anything? I've tried to hang out with you. I try to play Barbies with you. I try to ask you how school's going. You guys ignore me. Um, you don't like talking to me. You make fun of me. Look like your dolls. You know, you like, you'd rather play with your toys than talk to your uncle about what's going on in your lives and what your futures hold, okay? And that's okay. But now... We both have a nephew. So we do I, have a, a, I a very... It's, I wouldn't want to call I have, him... I have two. He was a normal kid, and we don't want to say he was disformed, but he, when he was born, he was um, looked very old and wise. You know what I mean? He already looked like an old man. And um, we called him Uncle Fester for a while, but he goes by Hayes, his biblical name. But um, I reached out to my sister recently and asked her, if Cody's grandparents, because her husband, our, our brother-in-law, is, unfortunately, he's balding. Um, it's not his fault. A lot of men go through this. Um, now, as a, as a garrison man, James and I and um, both of our other brothers and our father and grandfather have beautiful hair, um, long, gorgeous locks. And all my siblings, all my... Sisters, we all have wonderful hair. People compliment us all the time. I mean, James, oftentimes, will be walking across the street to Town & Country Market um, to get a cold iced tea, and people will stop and say, oh, my gosh, is that a toupee? They will think it's a hair piece that he's wearing. Well, unfortunately, even though genetically our nephew has 50% Garrison blood, He's also got 50% of his father's blood. His father's got bald blood in him. It's a, not a, I wouldn't call it a disease. It's an infection. It's, it's a issue. And so I reached out to does, my sister. Does he, does he have any of his uncle's blood clots? You know, blood clots. You're the only one I know that's got nodules growing on your arm and, and, uh, and in your stomach. Belly. It's from lay. You lay around. I mean, you just you laid too long. You know how people lay and get things happen. You laid. You have a certain number of years you get to lay. Okay, that's <laughs> God. And I don't. I mean, whatever your God is, it could be Allah or you know the big elephant guy or whatever you got going on for God. Wherever you're from, wherever you're listening. Donkey. It could be the donkey. Whatever. I don't care. All I'm saying is, the the Creator created you. <laughs> And he's like, you're going to be awake and doing this much stuff for this many years, and you're going to be sleeping for this many years. Boom. And it was all jumbled, but it was already set. You went to sleep too much. You done slept off all of your sleeping times. You used it up. And so now you got to make up for it. you got to be awake more. You're going to be one of them old people that sleep like three hours. That's it. You're going to be awake all the time. You'll probably start reading the Wall Street Journal or something. Or the New Era. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you might be doing a little new era reading. I don't know. But you the reason you got freaking nuts like all growing on you, acorns and stuff, is because you got damn you got damn laying disease, buddy. You've been laying. 
You got to get up. You gotta, the blood has to have a reason to move. If your body, you're just a, a cold soup. I mean, if you're not, your heart pumps, your heart pumps what, based on activity. If your activity is to make sure your heart barely pumps, like, your it's heart a, doesn't even pump. Your heart you're, probably. You're laugh. 78. <laughs> your heart probably, when you lay down, it doesn't even pump. It just flow. The blood just grab it. The gravity just pulls it into the wherever it falls, like a big gutter system. You have the veins of a damn gutter, 1930 gutter system. It just flows all over you. And parts of you get balls on them, and parts of you don't work. You don't move around, man. And that's okay. I know. I don't mind. I mean, I, to- I totally sympathize. I think you laid too long. People ask me, like, what's going on with him? Is he tired? I'm like, no, he laid for a long time. Guy? I mean, what do you want him to do? They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, he laid, I mean, he laid for 20 hours a day for six years. That's a lot of laying. Anyways. No, I don't think Hayes has his, has his uncle's nodules yet. I'm worried about it because I think he's going to be bald. Yeah, like his father. And early. Like, like his father. Yeah, well, and it's not that it's a bad look. Um, our brother-in-law looks great as a bald man. And his dad looks even better. I mean, if you've ever seen the cartoon Pinky and the Brain... Um, You'll know who I'm talking about, okay? It's a good-looking man. I'm talking about the brain, too, not... Yeah. Or wait, or Pinky. I don't know which one it is. Pinky is the... the which one was the bald one? Bro, brain was the Sorry about that. Michael Jordan just died. What? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I don't know. He, that's a bald, good-looking bald guy. Our brother-in-law looks like Michael Jordan, only white. Right? Yes, that's true. Hey, Same George. physique. Same outfit, same Corvette. Um, that's about. I mean, same, all. Um, same breakfast. They both eat. Uh, they both eat runny. They like their egg yolks uncooked. They always go uh, cook the egg whites and then pour the yolk on. Is what how Cody likes his eggs uncooked. And cold. you have to have six gallons of milk. Oh, he drinks seventeen gallons of milk a week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the man. Vitamin D. He loves it. He loves his calcium. He's got strong bones. He's Nebraskan, so he's got that tall forehead, and he's bald. And here's the thing. He's, he's just getting... Uh, well, fireworks. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, in this neighborhood, you never know. Could be gunshots. <laughs> I just thought... But um, I think what we're going to do for Hayes is we're going to set up a little bit of a foundation, um, at least through the family. For the Rogaine. Well, I thought that maybe we could make hair pieces for him. So we could donate all our hair, you and me and Caleb and Tug, um, obviously Grace and Audrey and Julie, and even Katie, which will be hard for her probably, but it'd be more natural if we all donated our hair and had some Korean lady or whoever does that sew our hair into a nice long hair piece for Hayes when he gets older. I think it's important for a 16-year-old boy to have nice hair. And at some point, Hayes is going to be a 16-year-old that looks like he's 65. Yes. And he needs his uncles I to help to, him out. I, I his dad's it. going to think it's normal. It's like, Cody, this is not normal. You weren't normal. You looked 150 when you were in high school. <laughs> Remember how old Cody looked? Yes. When people used to go to his class, they'd be like, I am a student. Is that your dad? Oh. Is that your dad? <laughs> Where's your son at? Yeah. It was awful. You'd go to class and... Like, oh, sorry, sir. And he'd be like, I'm just another student. Like, oh, really? Oh, my gosh. How old are you? You know, are you 100? That's awful. But he's he's really rich. I mean, that's the thing about our brother-in-law. He's He's got so much money. So maybe Hayes will have that. Then Katie informed me that Hayes has a possibility of always having white hair. Um, like Albert Einstein. So he could have that flowing lion's mane of crazy albino white hair. We could have an albino nephew, buddy. A powder. A bald white powder. That's a lightning baby. You know what I'm saying? That's purple blood. That's albino. That'd be badass. That'd be awesome. Because you're talking about magic. You're talking about mysticism is the thing when you're talking about albino people. I'm not talking about mysticism. I think of Harry Potter. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Magical spells, mysticism, potions. 
wouldn't it be cool to have a nephew that you bring a frog to and he can, you know... Turn into a, a tadpole. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what he can do with it. He rubs a little frog juice in a bowl of chili and all of a sudden, you know, Grandma Betty brings you a Corvette, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Corvette. And, and some deviled eggs. <laughs> a couple hot deviled eggs. And a more, more pie. You gotta... We don't... One thing our family has always been missing is a mystic. Um... We have a very traditional family of um, drunk German and Irish people, and we don't know a lot about really much of our family tree other than the drunk German Irish part. Seems to be the only people that were good at telling stories about it, so it, those passed down. Um, nobody's ever mentioned a gypsy or a mystic, but with our father engaged in, in his upcoming marriage to a Cajun woman, Louisiana... And that whole area is known for its black magic, its dark arts. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I that's really all of the, um, you know, the people that put the spooky painted masks on and jump around in the swamp and stuff with a bunch of snakes and potions and stuff. That's mm-hmm. Louisiana. That's Cajun. They put a bunch of Whoa. chili powder on their nut sacks and they dance around fires and stuff. And they they make magical, you know, spirit wishes and... A lot of times they come true. I mean, they can cause storms, but a lot of times they come true. That's what happened to Garth Brooks. He went down to, he was on his way to Nashville. He's just some dumb Oklahoma guy, you know, from Stillwater. You've been to where Garth Brooks grew up. Yeah. You drove there yesterday to try to get a driver's license. You know, 20 years ago, Garth Brooks is in the same building as you, trying to get a damn driver's license, go to Nashville. Did you tell, did you tell him about my experience? Not the bad part, not, to, not about getting the license, but when I was there. No, I didn't we tell him. Don't worry about it. Well, I wasn't. I mean, everybody knows the DMV sucks. I mean. But it really wasn't that bad. Well, you love people, and you love people with nasty attitudes. They weren't nasty at all. Well, I don't know how that's possible. Well, the, the fuck, the clerk was the only one that was upset. The rest of the customers were on their tablets and minding their own business. Well, the customers aren't nasty. I'm talking about the employees. Are usually the nasty ones. Oh well, then that's it's normal then. Okay, yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's never the customers to me that are nasty. They're there's just no, there's no there's no. It's the damn employees that you go there <coughs> and they're like they're mad that they're there and it's hey buddy, <clears throat> we don't work here. We didn't hire you. And then and then they leave. we didn't tell you to come work at the DMV. <laughs> we came here because the law told me we had to have a freaking license. Yes. I don't know why. Yes. I don't know why we even need this. Yes. At this point. Freaking give us the damn Coles vaccine. Tell us, put us in your damn computers and leave us alone so we don't have to drive around playing with these old mind games. Get on the internet and let us update our license on the internet. You can freaking gamble on the internet. You got all these NFL players that are going to prison for freaking gambling, and we can't get our damn license picture changed? What are you afraid of? Like, kids are going to be able to print out fake IDs? Kids are printing out fake IDs, dummies. Kids can print anything. Ask a 13-year-old and get you a fake ID. He'll have you one by tomorrow. He'll have you one by this afternoon. He'll have you one before you're done asking. Because guess what? It's simple. And Oh, we put a magical little strip in there. You think kids can't figure that out? Me and James broke out of a daycare chain-link fence as, like, six-year-olds with our fingers. Kids can do anything. So it is frustrating that society, when it comes to government agencies, likes to treat everybody as a bunch of dumb kids. And so you go through their stupid games. Did you fill out the paperwork? Did you? Say, like, I have a license, ma'am. Well, not here you don't. Here, this doesn't work. Except for what if I get pulled over? What if I leave this place and get pulled over? Are you going to look at my license then? And you're going to say it's me? You're going to charge me? How? How are you going to charge me if you say this license doesn't work? How are you going to charge me with a crime? It works for the crime charging, but it doesn't work for this part where it says it's me. <laughs> it's me enough to get charged by you assholes, but it's not me enough to come in here and say, this is me. Can this say Oklahoma instead of Kansas? This is a valid ID. Can you exactly. change the freaking name exactly. from Kansas to Oklahoma? Exactly. Well, we need to have a birth certificate. Why? I have a valid license in another state that borders you. Why do you need a birth certificate? I'm 50. I don't have a birth certificate. I'm moving to Oklahoma. I didn't carry my birth certificate. I don't bring it around with me, you dumbass. They know that, too. And they know you don't. Of course they know that. Because you know why? Because they're 50 and they don't have theirs. Nobody does. 
It's a big <laughs> joke. It's a hassle for no reason. Because the moment you leave and you rear in that person because you're checking out the girl walking the dog, and when that happens and the cops come and they grab your Kansas ID, guess what? They're going to say, Mr. Garrison, and you can't say, how do you know? How do you know my name is Mr. Garrison? Who says it on this ID? Well, apparently that ID doesn't mean shit. Because that lady in there told me it doesn't mean shit. <laughs> yeah, so which ass. is it? <laughs> it's either valid or it's not. Can I drive through your state? Is that illegal? No, it's not. Why isn't it illegal? Because I got a valid ID, dumbass. <laughs> and also, Connor, also to make it better, I have my social security card, which is my name. Yeah, but it's not enough. Can we get your birth? What else do you want? My Vax card? Here's a fake one. I got, I got one, a Burger I got King. One, or you have a fake one. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yours does say Burger King on it. Yeah. Um, it's just, I get it, but I don't. And I get why... It, if the bull, because here's a thing that gets peddled all the time. I hear it all the time. It gets peddled because there's a bunch of idiots. Like it matters, by the way. I don't care. But for the sake of the argument, a bunch of idiots that sit out there and say, we need to make sure we have people who are going to vote. They got to show their ID. There's voter ID laws. And there's a whole group of people that say, that's bullshit. You shouldn't make people have to show their ID to vote. A lot of these people can't get ID. And everybody that has ID goes, what do you mean they can't get ID? And I want to say to those people, have you tried getting one? It sucks ass. <laughs> That's why they don't have one. Because there's a bunch of brothers that went to the DMV to try to get their ID. And they're like, are you kidding me? What? I'm me. You guys have arrested me 800 times. You don't know it's me? You knew it was me then. <laughs> no. Are you kidding me? I can't. Where, my birth certificate? From who? I don't even know who my mom or dad is. Like, what are you talking about? It's hard to get an ID. I'm with them. It's stupid. It shouldn't be hard. How about, how about this? Fix the ID process and then start talking about whether people should have one or not. Until you can fix how it is to get one, stop making people have one. It's bullshit. And there is a better way. You just don't listen to anybody. You just do it the same way it's always been done. Only you try to add technology. Like, oh, we're going to update the system. We now have a Facebook page. It's 2023. You got a Facebook page? Well, who are you, Garth Brooks? Wake up. Facebook's dead. We've already sued them 800 times. It's meta now, baby. They're in the metaverse. You don't even need an ID. You can drive a damn airship in Meta. Snoop Dogg's driving around with Martha Stewart throwing damn Juneteenth thongs at people in Meta. Driving, they're driving around with Britney Spears. It's just wild. And it's just happening. And then they sit around and act like, make sure you go to the DMV. The what? What's the what's DMV? Is that by NASA? Like, what are you talking about? Next to the FBI? Shut up with your acronyms. <laughs> Send me a license. How much money does it cost? $1,000? It's always money. Yeah. And it gives them, to, like, well, if we didn't charge, we wouldn't have jobs. Good! Your job sucks and you suck at it. <laughs> I hope you don't. You can't work here, be angry, hate your freaking job, and then be mad if it goes away. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, this is how we make our money. Well, no shit. Yeah. So I'm just paying you and the state just so you can have a job? Hey, Conrad, get this. Get this. Get this. Yeah. Uh, this is all this. If you guys can't help us with our license and there's no transaction or money <laughs> going on with everybody how are you supposed to stay in a business with no money coming in uh, if you get t turn on everybody that comes in because it doesn't matter it's all fake they don't make money they lose money every year well, the no. money that they do make is from people like you that finally do get your stupid birth certificate, which didn't cost... So your license doesn't cost you $50 or whatever they say. It costs you plus the 15 plus the three damn weeks of time that you sit around waiting for the damn thing. And what the reason you needed the license was for was to save money. So that's costing you money there. Nobody thinks about that. They say, well, the license is only 50 bucks. Bullshit! Bullshit! <laughs> And it's four hundred and thirty dollars. That's what it cost me. And posters too. You go through all that and you say it to him like, well, you know, well, if you just hand your birth certificate, I when I'm born, if they would have stapled it to my forehead, then I'd have it. Okay, but that's not what they happened. Apparently, they gave it to my mom. She doesn't know where it's at. So call her. How about I buy it? If you want it, call the person who's got it. I don't have it. When I'm born, they didn't shove it up my rectum and say, okay, we'll pull it out when you're freaking twenty and you need an ID. Did they? No. Birth certificate is given to the parent. If the parent loses it, now it's on the kid to go buy one? It's the, yeah. So anyways, we were dealing with that yesterday. Um, <clears throat> we're thinking about setting up a foundation for our, our nephew's hair. Yes. 
Just do that, Conrad. Um, if you want to donate, go to dmv.com and donate there. It's fine. There's an email there. Just contact your local DMV and ask. Make to sure you have your birth certificate before you go on the, before you go to the website. Um, we got a printer here in the studio now. I printed James a note yesterday. Can you read it to you? <laughs> you like to read it as uh, left okay. to right. Let's see. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, it's just a simple note. Um, well, earlier we had NASA in here too, though. But we did have a NASA note. Um, I before I get it again. Uh, That's all right. Purpose. Chapter. Uh, I did. <laughs> State Department of Health. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. No, oh, looks like it's about me. <laughs> it's like, it probably isn't the it. only other um, thing I had was I finally finished. Um, I think it's over. A series that I've talked about it a little. It's called Silo. Um, for I, the sake of this, I missed out. For the sake of this conversation with James, I'll just tell you that these people started. Okay. Tom Hanks, you know who that is. Um, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. There you go. So what the show is about is um, we're like 140 years in the future in this show. And what had happened is something had happened to humanity, like probably climate change, I'm sure. It's a Greta Thornburg thing. Um, anyways, something had happened with humanity. Mm -hmm. And so they took civilization. They put them in an underground silo. that's like hundreds of stories deep. And then people just live down underneath, and they have babies, and it's all ran by the board. You know, it's all ran by the founders, is who they call them, the founders. And these people kind of dictate who should be having kids, and then what those kids' career is going to be, because everybody's got a job within this silo to keep the silo running. So you got the people that manufacture parts, and the people that run the generators, the people that run the IT, and the people that. All this different stuff, the electricians and all these different things. And there's 10,000 people that live in this silo. And it's been there for 140 years. But what happens is every once in a while, there's an anomaly. There's a person that's like, what's the point of this? Like, what happens on the outside of the silo? What happens if you leave? Do you die? Well, they have these screens, like uh, projector screens, you know, to what they are showing is what's going on outside. It's what they're telling people. Mm. Okay. But they're just patching a video in of whatever they want to patch in. So nobody can actually see what's going on outside. So people found like an old hard drive, and the whole show is based on this hard drive they find that shows when you leave, it's just the world out there. It's just green. But here's the thing. Is even here's where it gets you. You get to the end, and then you go, "Is that a projection?" Like the whole, even them getting out of the silo, even this one person escaping the silo, which you don't even escape. You get sentenced to leave. They call it going to clean, where you go outside and you just die. You go outside to clean the silo, but you just die. Hmm. Is what everybody thinks happens. Nobody knows. You got to have the guts to do it, and once you have the guts to have the faith that there's more out there that these people are lying, and you think you have the proof because you found all these clues, then you go out there. But what if you go out there, and then what you're feeling around is a computer screen? <laughs> so then you don't know. Now where are you? Are you in another silo? <laughs> and then what happens is, what happens if they pan back, and you see the circle of the top of your silo, and then it's just an empty field. And then there's another circle, and another circle, and another circle, and that means that there's all these silos for 140 years, Whoa. each one has its own different management. Own, people think that that's the whole world that's happening within that silo. Whoa. And it's a definitely a metaphor on what people do with their own lives. We talk to people here all the time that are in their 50s, 60s, that have were born here, lived here, mm -hmm. lived their whole life, worked here, known everything, worked in this building as it was a 1923 Texaco, then worked here as it was a diner, then worked here as an insurance shop and want a job here now. Mm. And in my mind, I go, oh my, buddy, like your world is real small. Now, you think that, but then it goes, well, who cares? You know, 
Maybe you just like it here. It's comfortable or whatever. I don't know. That's the, but I think that that's the part where you get wrapped up in your own thing and then you forget that every, do you ever do that? You drive around and you look at somebody, you have no idea who this person is and you realize they got their whole, like they are going through, they're carrying their rocks today too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what do they got going on? Who knows? Are they like you or are they just thinking about like, are they going to go to Red Lobster tonight? What are they going to order? Or are they thinking about who knows? You know, and but what are what is the ultimate goal of any of it? Hmm. Like, what is your ultimate goal? Like to make sure that O'Reilly's does the best at delivering parts. That's my goal. I'm an O'Reilly's driver. It's like, mm-hmm. or I'm the guy that works on. Um, I was watching how it's made the other night, and they were showing um, how you make leather carp. <laughs> art. You know what I mean? How you make a leather fish art? How you stuff a leather fish? That's what this guy does, James. He wakes up in the morning, takes him four months to make a leather fish. Whoa. And he, when he gets done making a leather trout, which is what he made, four months, he makes another leather fish every day. So if you were to drive by not knowing this guy, you might see him on a corner going, I bet that guy's going in to take a dump just because you're joking. And that guy might be thinking, I hope I get that leather carp done today. That's what he's got going on. Huh. And I don't know why Megan's so mad at me. She knows i got to get this carp done. She's always getting mad at me. I've been working on it for two and a half months. And on, of course I didn't get to take her to dinner. I know she likes Chick-fil-A. But the... she knows I'm working on this leather carp. Huh? Doesn't she know that this carp needs to be done? And I had to go to the DMV yesterday. Took all day. And he's mad about that. <clears> he wants <throat> to get his damn leather carp done. And then at the end of the day, it's like, well, I, just, I hope all these leather carps made people happy. Leather carps. Like a fish that's made of leather. Yeah. And he just makes one every day. Well, he makes one every four months. And he has all, and then he sells it. Yeah, I guess people just call him and say, hey, man, I need a leather bass. He's like, all right, I'll, I'll get one in about four months. That'd be $10,000. They go, all right, we'll send you a check. And he sits there and makes them. And, but he gets in fights. I mean, he's got a daughter. I bet. And the son, his son's doing drugs. He's worried about that, but he doesn't got time to deal with it. He can't go to school every day, every parent teacher conference, when he's got Bass Pro Shops got three leather basses on order. And he wants, his wife wants him to go to school and talk to the principal. What is, what is she doing? I mean, what is she doing? Really, what are you doing, sweetie? Hmm. Hmm? You know what I mean? Yeah. What I'm saying is, this guy's wrapped up in carp world. Meanwhile, he's not realizing everybody around him doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. But in his world, in his wife's world, in so his daughter's like world. It's kind of like our business, uh, uh, Conrad, that we got a taco shop and we're surrounded by people. Uh, and then we're, we're trying to make our carbs every day. We just make yeah. our carbs every day, man. And most people don't care because they're making their own carbs. Yeah. That's okay. You just don't take yourself too seriously because who cares? <laughs> Because, do you remember um, how long, who was the guy that started Chick-fil-A? I don't know that one. See, nobody gives a shit. It's the most famous fast food restaurant in the world. <laughs> we know Dave Thomas. You know, he started Wendy's. No, we know no, Carl's no, Jr. No, fucking Colonel. We know the Colonel Sanders. You know, we know that. We know the guy that stole the McDonald's. You know what I mean? That's Zach, it. Zach Efron. Zach Efron. It just doesn't matter. I mean, what matters is the things that you say matter, but that's it. You can, and you can say whatever you want, and nobody cares. You could just be like, yeah, well, it really matters to me that I wear pantyhose. And people are like, for what? Like, it, it means a lot to me. And they're like, okay, man, cool. So do you think I should wear some, some, some special arm things and uh, belly things for my... My, my I think lumbar. you should be wearing lumbar support for sure. I think you have um, I, you definitely have a torn disc. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think a lot of your di- the jelly. You know how your jelly you got disc jelly. Yeah. I think it all went to the it all went to one side of your disc. I think it all backed up. You know what I mean? It, yeah. You laid down too long and all the jelly soaked to one side. Got stuck there. I'm seeing heart rate. Yeah. How's your heart rate? What's seventy eight? 
All right, what we got now? I'm sorry about what I said about the DMV. If you or your family works there. <laughs> now it's up. Quit. What's it now? 85. Ooh, 78 to 85. Your heart's racing, buddy, and so is mine. Uh, happy 4th of July. Um, here, we'll play a 4th of July song. I got... Actually, we'll play... This is a good family. Uh, where the... Of course not. Of course I didn't bring my phone. Did I bring my phone back here? Yeah, I did. I got it right here. Let's see if I can put it on here. Should have... Uh... Don't let your meat loaf. The in-laws are waiting. The games have begun. The cell phone keeps ringing. Just don't answer it, hon. The whole thing's arranged just to aggravate Dad and it's amateur day on the old super slab. The kids are strapped down like a half load of pipe All safe in their car seats They fuss and they gripe Well, you can't hardly blame them It must be a bitch Counting the crosses Off down in the ditch And this one's got flowers This one's got a wreath This one's got a name Painted down underneath Was the road all iced up where they going too fast Here's five in a circle Left from the last holiday Holiday And there's a three trailer rig Just throwing up spray not legal to run on this kind of day but goddamn the smokies and the four wheelers too stay off of my bumpers or the same goes for you cause there'll be none for him he that wants it the most as he hauls it on out to the Oregon coast no turkey no gravy no Zinfandel wine stay off to the right and we'll get along fine And he's missing the football He's missing the fun He won't see his grandkids Cause he's off on a run And some hat's on the radio Singing his song But it don't make a damn He's in for a long holiday Holiday Now Granny, she's yelling, she's ready to eat And she's having conniptions cause they won't take their seats But she's got them all gathered now under one roof With her camcorder loaded, she's gonna get proof now, Do you have to wear that? Well, I just don't see why Please pass the potatoes, I'll eat shit and die Did you hear about Ellen? She's leaving, you know How about those Packers? Think it'll snow And the minute it's over They'll scatter like quail Off down the freeway In the teeth of a gale Silent and shattered And numb to the core They count themselves lucky They got through one more Holiday Holiday Highway patrolman stands in the rain He just lets it run down To soften the stain of the blood on his pant leg From working that wreck And he won't forget it in time for the next holiday
departing Chicago at 9.52 in clean desert camo all baggy and loose sits an Iowa guardsman alone at the gate and this place sure looked different in 1968 when he traveled with mom first time on a plane to visit some kin he's forgotten their names but he remembers the soldiers still in their teens in their spit polished shoes and those pressed army greens with the creases so sharp and their faces so smooth but their eyes look so heavy he wondered how they could move and now he's got that same look like his insides are black he's in his mid 40s and he has to go back and he can't even smoke while he waits for his plane the uniform's different, but the mission remains To do like they tell you, and don't make a fuss Why is not an issue, so don't think too much Just do what you have to Shut up and drive, if you fall apart later Well, at least you're alive You can get you some help, you can deal with it then And life will get better, till it happens again Cause there's something inside us It won't let us be It stalks through our days Till it's too dark to see And it's damn near as deadly As Texans on ice Lord, don't they beat all Y'all have a nice holiday Holiday